Welcome back everyone to Genshin Interact. We'll be taking a look at the second half of the 4.5 banners today. The first character we'll be looking at is Nevelette, who is arguably the strongest DPS in the game right now and will be getting his first rerun. The other character sharing a banner with him is one of the best supports the game has to offer, Kazuha. Let's go through both of these banners and see whether or not these characters are a good pulling option for you. If you do enjoy the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe and check out the rest of the channel for other videos you may be interested in. We also have a Discord you can join where our members can talk with each other and even talk with us. Looking at how stacked this banner is, it might be very difficult to see who you should pull for. Now, on to the video. First, we are going to go over each of the characters' kits for the people who don't really know the characters all too well. Since both of these characters have been previously on some reruns and already have had previous banners, if you would like to go ahead and skip to the weapon discussion or the question section, you can find those timestamps below in the description or at the timeline below as well. The first character we want to talk about is Nevelette. Now talking about him and looking at him first is his team function and where he kind of fits in a team. And first and foremost, looking at his team function, at least he's going to be an on-field Hydro DPS. And he's going to be very stable with that on-field and he has a very high amount of Hydro application. Now where he fits in the team, obviously, like I said, he's a DPS, so he's going to go very specifically in that role. He doesn't really do anything else that really helps other characters do too much besides maybe applying Hydro for some sort of like Hyper Boom team. But besides that, his main idea is to just get a bunch of Hydro damage out and he's going to be probably the main reason that you do damage on his main teams. Now Rift, if you could go a little bit more to his kit and his ascensions and talking about his talents. Yeah, so looking right into Nervalette, we do see that he ascends into crit damage and that makes sense as he is a DPS. So that's gonna be very, very helpful. Now looking right into his normal attack, there's nothing really special about specifically doing normal attacks, but tied to the skill itself is his charged attack um, empowerment, which is going to be very, very important to how he plays in his playstyle. If you didn't already know, Nervalet, most of Nervalet's damage comes from his charged attacks, so you still want, you still will want to level the normal attack talent, as that will help charge attack damage as well. So looking right at the charge attack empowerment, this is legal evaluation. It just states that while charging up, Nervalet will gather power of water, and basically once this is finished charging up, he can move around while it's charging, by the way, but once it's charged up, he will unleash basically what looks like a Kamehameha, and this will deal a lot of Hydro damage for about three seconds over time. So once again, this is basically the main source of his damage, so you will want to level this normal attack talent. But Vixen, what can you tell us about his skill? Well, looking at his skill, it's called O Tears I Shall Repay, and it summons a Raging Waterfall that deals AoE Hydro damage to opponents that are in front of him based on his max HP. Now, looking beyond this as well, it will drop and generate three Source Water Droplets, which are going to be able to make him charge his Equitable Judgment Charge Attack, which is where you're doing all of that huge Kamehameha damage. Basically, that huge torrent of damage is going to be charged quicker when you actually can pick up some Source Water Droplets that you can get from his skill as well as from his burst. He will also have the Archie Numa alignment to him so that when he uses his skill, a Spirit Breath Thorn will descend that will pierce through opponents with Numa aligned Hydro damage. Now Rift, talking about getting three Source Water Droplets or even and even more actually through the burst, what can you tell us about his burst? So his burst is called O oh, Tides I Have Returned, and basically he'll just unleash a wave that deals AoE Hydro damage, once again based on Nervalet's max HP. And after a short interval, two more waterfalls will descend and deal Hydro damage in a somewhat smaller AoE, but the biggest part of this is that it will generate six of those source water droplets that Vixen just talked about. So this is going to be very, very helpful to help with your charge attack, Equitable Judgment, to help that charge pretty much instantly and you can get a lot more of those per rotation so that's the biggest part but also it is a nice touch of damage and do note that it does deal damage on his hp so you're going to obviously build your nervalette with a lot of hp to help both the skill and burst damage as well as his charged attack damage next we're going to be talking about kazuha now kazuha is a great character that a lot of people are going to be looking forward to getting especially since he's coming back on a rerun now nervalette is probably the best damage dealer or DPS in the game right now, at least one of the best, and so he's arguably a lot of what people are looking forward to considering once again this is his first rerun. Now looking at Kazuha though, it's kind of a stacked banner because of how good he is, and now going a little bit into his kit as to a reason why, he is an off-field animo support, but there's reasons as to why he is so good with grouping ability from his skill, as well as so many buffs that he can get through his burst, as well as being an animo support can use Viridescent Venerer. Now, looking into his actual kit, he ascends into EM, so this is going to help him more with his talents, which we'll see in a minute. Looking at his normal attack, there is literally nothing special at all from this. He does get a Midori Ranzan from his skill, 
and that's about it. So Rift, what can you tell us about his skill? So looking right at his skill, this is called Chihayaburu. And this is a really, really fun skill in my personal opinion. It adds a lot of fun factor to Kazuo and how you can use him even aside from the fact of how good a support he is. So he does have all this supporting capabilities, but he is just very fun to play. So with the skill, he's just going to do a basic animo jump in the air, which will do an animo damage. And then you can do the plunging attack, which kind of goes back to the normal attack with the Mandare Rons on. That's what this is. and allow you to do that plunging attack. You can, you know, infuse that with one of the core four elements. You can also hold the skill, though, which will kind of charge it up before he does the greater animo damage over a larger AoE, right? So you can hold it up, get a little bit more damage. Some people will tell you just use the tap because in some cases where he is just a support, you're not too worried about the damage of that and it, you're kind of just wasting some time per se, but it kind of just depends, whatever you want to do. The hold will get more um, AoE grab. So if you're grouping, you will want to do the hold, but if you are just going for a viridescent shred, then tapping is going to be better just so you can have more time, you know, really just uptime for the other supports, things that are going on there with their buffs. And going back to the plunging attack, after you use the skill, the Madari Ranzan, when you do this plunging attack, after that, it can infuse any of the elements that it will grab around you, one of the core four elements, and convert the plunging attack to be kind of an infused swirl damage. You get the animo damage off, but you'll also get the swirl damage off. And when you land, Kazuo will create this small wind tunnel um, after he lands, and that'll pull in nearby objects and opponents. Looking at his burst, it's called Kazuo Slash. Now, this signature technique of Kazuo's blade work will then do an AoE animo damage hit that will create a field in front of him called Autumn Whirlwind. It will do periodic bits of damage for AoE aligned damage. Now, in this specific burst, it is, has an elemental absorption technique, and basically, once again, those core four elements, or Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, it will come into contact with them. If it does, it will deal additional elemental damage of that type, and it will then infuse the, each of those hits basically with it. So basically, if you just pop his ult in the overworld, it's just going to have constant animal damage hit, but let's say that you had a Hydro Slime that was in the burst uh, AoE, then if he was inside of it, it would then hit it and then swirl obviously that Hydro. And since it came into contact with either Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, it would then obviously for every consistent one after that, be doing an elemental absorption. So then it would then deal additional damage of Hydro afterwards because of it. Now, when we talk about passive talents and looking at them, we really kind of just pick and choose the ones that are going to be extremely useful. And for this one, it is Poetics of Fubutsu. Now looking at this, it states that upon triggering a swirl reaction, Kazuo will grant all party members a 0.04% elemental damage bonus to the element absorbed by swirl for every point of elemental mastery he has for 8 seconds. Now keep this in mind because as well, the biggest part about this as well is that he has bonuses for different elements obtained through this method can coexist. So basically you can have both a Hydro, a Pyro, Cryo, and Electro basically buff happening all at the same time as long as you are swirling in between that time period. So he can have a Pyro swirl with his skill and then he can swirl Hydro right afterwards with his ult and or his burst and then at that point you can have that the timers are going to be different so that Pyro swirl at the beginning with his skill will start for eight seconds and let's say two seconds later you have a Hydro swirl from his burst and then at that point it's going to start another eight second timer for itself so they're going to be separated now looking at this it's the biggest part about him because not only does he ascend into elemental mastery but usually when you're running causeway you're just trying to go as much elemental mastery as possible and 0.04 percent elemental damage bonus for every point of elemental mastery doesn't seem amazing until you probably get to a high enough point where you can level 80 level 90 your weapon if it's an elemental mastery main stat as well as getting level 20 on your sans goblet and circlet can get a very high amount of elemental mastery around 7 to 900 and even higher with some other buffs from obviously different artifacts as well as a higher rated weapon so getting this point you can probably get between a 30 to 40 or 45 percent elemental damage bonus whenever you swirl any element which is extremely extremely good for dps characters that he is paired with all right so now that we've talked about the characters we're going to talk a little bit about the weapon banner and if these weapons are in the end worth it for the characters or for your account essentially so first off looking at nervalet's weapon tome of the eternal flow this at level 90 has a main stat of 88.2% crit damage. And once again, we know Nervalet is a DPS. This is going to be very good for him. We also already talked about him ascending into crit damage. So you're going to have a lot of crit damage on Nervalet, probably making sure that you want to run the four piece Marshal's a Hunter four piece artifact set so that you have some crit rate. 
Anyways, looking at the ability on this weapon, it states that HP is increased by 16%, assuming that the refinement is refinement 1. When current HP increases or decreases, charged attack damage will be increased by 14% for 4 seconds, and this has a maximum of 3 stacks. This effect can be triggered also once every 0.3 seconds. When the character has 3 stacks, or a third stack's duration refreshes, 8 energy will be restored. This energy restoration effect can be triggered once every 12 seconds. So the fact that this is increasing charge attack damage, obviously we know Nervalette is doing a lot of charge attack damage. It's specifically helping him out a lot. Also getting the HP increase is helping him by a lot as well. We know his damage scales on that. So there's a lot that you're getting out of this weapon for Nervalette specifically. And even the energy restoration is also, you know, just a little nice cherry on the top. Some other characters that this could be used for, no, no one specifically would come immediately to my mind, but just the fact that it is a crit damage weapon is going to be very helpful. Um, any Really any Catalyst users that are going to be using charge attacks, like so Yanfei can come to mind for me. Um, if you're doing Wanderer on charge attacks and you're not really ever using the normals, that could be a possibility as well, although the HP doesn't really help those characters. Vixen, what are some other characters that maybe you've already thought of? Well, in my mind, obviously, I'm a Yayamiko simp because I actually love her over official, and I will get plenty of hate for that, but that's okay. So I do think of Yayamiko, but probably the two characters that it's most going to be useful for because of the ability when it talks about HP increasing and decreasing with Risley and with both as well Nervalet, considering it's his weapon, he can both of these characters can change their HP with their charge attacks. So with normal attacks in... Uh, Risley's uh, skill state he can then actually uh, lose HP and then when he does a charge attack at a certain point when he's below 50% he can do a charge attack and increase his HP and so that's constant HP change which is going to allow this weapon to increase charge attack damage so basically all it takes is three normal attack hits and then a charge attack hit is going to do a bunch of damage and especially since he's pretty easy to make melt hits happen this is going to be extremely extremely good for him. His burst is a little bit of help as well, so the 8 energy restoration is nice as well. Obviously, with Nervalette, though, I think it's going to be his best weapon, and it's going to be best for him, but probably Risley is the only other character. Like you were talking about, Wander and Yaimiko could be good too. Looking at the next weapon, Freedom Sworn is the other weapon, and it is Kazuha's specific weapon. And it's easily pretty stated why, because at level 90 at R1, it has 608 basic attack with 198 elemental mastery on it, compared to the 165 you usually get from level 94 stars. The ability on the weapon states that it increases damage by 10%. When the character wielding this weapon triggers an elemental reaction, they gain a sigil of rebellion. This effect can be triggered once every 0.5 seconds and can be triggered even if the character is not on the field. When you possess two sigils of rebellion, or basically triggering two elemental reactions, all of them will be consumed, and all nearby party members will obtain Millennial Movement Song of Resistance for 12 seconds. This effect increases normal, charge, and plunging attack by 16%, and increases attack by 20%. Once this effect is triggered, you will not gain any sigils of rebellion for 20 seconds, and of the many effects that Millennial Movement does, both of these buffs of this same type cannot stack at the same time. So basically, you can't have multiple different characters with this weapon on in a team. Let's say Lynette and Kazuha. You can't, or, you know, and also Bennett. You can't have all three of them having Millennial Movement happen. So you can't stack three characters or four characters even with this specific buff on. Looking at this specific uh, weapon, I'm thinking mainly, obviously, this is going to be very good for Kazuha. It is his main weapon, and a lot of Elemental Mastery is going to help him, obviously, like we were talking about earlier, give more Elemental Damage bonus, but some other characters could have come into mind. I did talk about Lynette, and if you're trying to maybe just get some, like, Swirl damage of some sort, I guess it could kind of help, but really, the other character that's a little bit heavier in my mind and is probably the best 4-star for this specific weapon is looking at Kuki. Now, Kuki is probably the best Hyper Bloom procker in the game, maybe besides someone like Sino, and it's probably just between those two. But at least in this sense, it's very, very good because this weapon's going to make sure that she's going to be doing a lot more damage based off Hyper Bloom because Hyper Bloom is based off of the level of the character and their amount of elemental mastery. So keep that in mind if you're trying to go for a high Hyper Bloom Kuki and you accidentally get this weapon because you're trying to go for Tome of the Eternal Flow, know that the weapon isn't necessarily useless for a lot of other characters besides this. It's not really that great, but for someone like Kuki and Kazuha, it is extremely good. And just one other thing I wanted to quickly mention, I think you already talked about it, Vixen, but that Millennial Movement that it talks about on Freedom Sworn, and how it can't stack with other buffs of the same type, I think, and I could be wrong about this, but I think what it's talking about there is it's actually referencing the other weapons in the set. We know Freedom Sworn is part of a set, so Elegy for the End is also in that, Song of Broken Pines, 
are both in it. That's Venti and Eula's weapons, if you didn't know. Um, and they also have millennial movement effects that, that their buffs are doing. They are considered part of the millennial movement. So I think if, like, you're using those other weapons in the same team, I know Elegy can be used on other bow users, for example, like Yalon or Fischl, etc. If you have them in the same team, just know you're not getting both of the buffs from the weapon if say your official is using Elegy and you have Kazuo in there with Freedom Sworn, you can actually use him synergetically like that. Now we're going into our summary section where we're looking at a bunch of different questions that we like to ask for just pulling in general and looking at a bunch of different questions. Now the first question that comes to mind is do you need either character on your account as well as it's paired with what elements or roles is your account in need of and maybe who else kind of fits this role. Now looking at Nouvellet, He's a great character and it will probably be great for all characters to have and use on all different levels and it's very easy to use him and his teams are very easy to build and it's a lot of easy characters to kind of use with him. He's very flexible. Now Child and Ayato fill this role very well. In a sense they're, they're very good hydro damage users. But in a sense that they're very easy to use, Child kind of comes pretty short at that considering he's a little difficult to kind of figure out. And well, Ayato kind of is like, well, he's actually good, but Ayato kind of forcefully and is kind of only sits in the Vaporize team, as well as you're going to need a lot of Pyro to make sure that you can keep up with him. Now, Nuvalet is very, very good considering he's just straight damage. He's very easy to build. He's very easy to use, and he has a lot of teams that he can go into. Now, the only issue that probably Nuvalet probably has is that he can't really sit in really a Vaporize team. He almost puts out too much and he's almost too good at being in a hydro applier so at this sense it almost makes it a little bit difficult to actually put him in this sense but if you need hydro this catalyst having kamehameha using dragon is probably your best bet now looking into kazuha he's a great veer as inventor support and this specific artifact set is going to be very very nice considering if you swirl then you're going to be dropping the opponent's uh, resistance to whatever you just swirled and so obviously with that element you're going to try to be you know swirling the element of your dps so that you can do more damage with said dps so that's why it's going to be very good for him as well as his passive is going to be helping with you know getting all that elemental damage bonus that we've you know beat to death so that's kind of a big thing with him is he's probably one of the best supports that the game has to offer and while no one mirrors his passive really, others can still use the Viridus and Venerer support ability, you know, using that four-piece artifact set. Characters like Venti, who has a better pulling ability, if that's kind of what you're going after. Someone like Jean, who can heal, which Kazuo doesn't really do. And Sucrose is another really good option, considering that she's actually probably the four-star version of Kazuo. So she's got some good uh, passives and she's got some good abilities and she's probably more aligns with what Kazuo is more compared to anybody else but she's basically just his four star version so she is a little bit easier to get even Lynette and Sayu could use it and albeit that's probably you're not best bet considering they're a little bit more difficult you know Lynette isn't really and Sayu aren't really the best supports in general to really use but they could still make it work his focus isn't necessarily doing a lot of animo damage, so if you're looking for a solid animo DPS, look for Zhao or Wanderer to help you out, but he is probably, once again, the best support Genshin really could offer you at this point in time. Looking at our next question, we ask, what kinds of teams are you trying to build? And so when we're looking at Nervalet, although he is a good Hydro Applier, he is almost too good at it, as Vixen was already talking about, and, and kind of like why you wouldn't use him in a Vaporized team, because it's really, he's more of an enabler because he can't actually get the vaporize off himself because he's just applying it too much, right? So to get him to consistently vaporize is just kind of impossible. He'll do best though at straight hydro damage teams, especially like with Farina on there. The, you know, a lot of his best teams involve Farina. And there's also freeze options you can do with that, Electro Charge, Hyper Bloom. And th so there's still a lot of different teams that you can do with just this single DPS on your account. You know, as I said, working best with Farina and some other Animo characters, you know, Kazuo is on this other side. Kazuo is a great support with him, especially if you're doing Mono Hydro teams. Um, and again, once, like Vixen was talking about, using the Viridescent Venomer, uh, getting the Hydro Shred off that with another support thrown in. That's a lot of his best teams. A lot of his best teams, talking about Nervalet, is a lot of Mono Hydro, but with a lot of options, like I just stated. When looking at Kazuo, literally any team that has an element to swirl. So any of the core four elements in the team, Kazuo becomes a candidate for being a good support in the team, right? Even in stuff like Burgeon and Hyperbloom, where that's not really the focus, he can actually still help, even with just the grouping effect, that can help some Burgeon teams, because you kind of want them to be close, because it's more of an explosive AoE type team, whereas Hyperbloom has the homing, more single target capability with it. 
but still like increasing whatever element that can be swirlable is just going to be a nice cherry on top and he does have some okay damage just passively even if you're not building for it so you're going to want to swirl the dps's main element to make sure that they do the most damage and any team that focuses on your main dps dealing the damage that is a core four element and when i say core four i'm talking about cryo hydro pyro and electro so in any of those scenarios, Kazuha is going to be one of your best bets because on top of getting the Viridescent Shred, being able to be a holder for that, he's giving you that elemental damage bonus increase that we talked about in, in the Kazuha section earlier on in the video when we talked about his second passive. So in a team with Nervalette as the example, since they are together on the banner, you will want to swirl Hydro or if you were playing Raiden, make sure you're swirling Electro. Basic and easy to understand as it gets. But simple does not mean weak in his case. Once again, both of these characters are honestly very, very good at what they do. Now looking into probably the biggest section that we look at in terms of questions, we look at kind of weighing the dangers between new free-to-play players, veteran free-to-play players, players that have played for a long time and spent a little bit of money, whales, whatever you are, whatever type of sea mammal or animal that you have decided to call <laughs> yourself, we're going to look at that. So these questions are for the people who are generally looking at whether or not they should get the characters, whether, you know, where they kind of sit at in the game, as well as probably looking at some constellations. Even if you're not necessarily a whale, looking at early constellations is still a good idea. Now, free-to-play players need characters that can slot into a lot of different teams, and we make sure to say that every single time because that's really what's necessary because you really need to make sure that you're making the game easier for yourself before a lot of the late-game content really kind of kicks in. Now, Nervalette and Kazuha are extremely good for early-game players as well as free-to-play. Nervalette makes building a DPS look easy, and Kazuha only really needs elemental mastery and a little bit of energy recharge to make him extremely good. Both of these characters are great for all levels of the game. That being said, if you already have Child or Ayato and are in need of an animal support, go for Kazuha. And if you already have Venti, Sucrose, Jean, or even Shan Yun, who's an extremely good character as well, you need a Hydro DPS as well in this point, or maybe you just need a DPS in general, go for Nervalette. If you are new, go for Nervalette, and Nervalette is probably the better pick in most of the scenarios that you can really look at. Since other characters like Venti and Shan Yun can come around for you to get instead of Kazuha, we did have Shan Yun recently, so her rerun's probably going to be coming up close, as well as it's been a hot minute since Venti, I believe, has gotten a rerun, so he could probably be coming in the near future as well. So Kazuha tends to be a little bit, I would say, just very, very minimally, just a little bit behind Nervalette. Looking at veteran spenders and even veteran free-to-play players, you should already have a decent lineup by now and possibly even two four-person teams for the Spiral Abyss. And this is kind of where the issue sets in. Both of these characters are great and can push you farther in these Abyss settings and for some team combos that you might be looking for. Kazuo will give you more flexibility while Nervalite is just straight damage. So as Vixen and I ourselves are veteran players, and we're not necessarily free-to-play, but we're definitely not whales either. So we're probably veteran, you know, small spenders like i just do battle pass and welcome that's pretty much it so like for me i don't have nervalette but i do have ayato and so the need for me to pull nervalette is just lessened by that as vixen already stated so like that's one reason i wouldn't pull nervalette i still could though because i'm a veteran and i already have all of these other roles on my account filled i already have a pyro dps i already have whatever you name it right so at this point in the game a lot of us veterans are at a point where the need for us to pull a character out of needing it to complete the Spiral Abyss is just not there anymore because we already have what we need. And now it's just, I would say, pull for who you just genuinely want if you want him for fun factor, right? So I could pull Nervalette just for fun factor, even though I already have Ayato, and I don't think that's the worst thing in the world because, like I was saying, I already have everything else that I need to complete the Abyss. I'm not really looking for anything else besides fun factor, and I think that's very important to not get in the mindset of like needing this character because they are so good or needing this because meta, right? I'm, I, I like to stress that not being a meta slave is honestly the more enjoyable experience of playing really any game. So just don't, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't let that enslave you, right? Just, just play the game for fun. If you want the character, pull the character. And I think that's what's most important. Now that we're going to be looking a little bit beyond veteran players as well as free to play, now looking at either high spenders or people who are just looking for constellations, even if you're a free to play, even if you're a veteran person who's been here for a while, you could still look for getting constellations. Getting constellations is not only for obviously looking at the, you know, people who are just spending loads and loads of money on the game. As a general rule, most good constellations other than the C6 are going to be your C1 or C2. So 
looking at these two, looking at Neverlet specifically, everyone's talking about how the C1 for Neverlet is extremely good, and there's a good reason for it. It states that when Nervalet takes the field, he will obtain one stack of Pastrakana glories from the passive talent heir to the Ancient Seas Authority. Because this specific passive talent states that when a party member triggers any type of Hydro-related reaction, it will give him a stack of Pastrakana glories, and this will grant Nervalet that stack for 30 seconds and will have a max of 3 stacks. The Pastrakana glories causes Charge Attack Equitable Judgment, that huge blast that he does, and it gives it each at each stack 1, 2, and 3, 110, 125, and 160% of its original damage. So basically you're just stacking even more damage for that charge attack that you're doing every time that you get this specific thing, when you're basically doing a constant Hydro-related reaction. Additionally, while you're in this state, his, char his interruption resistance will be increased while using the charge attack empowerment, legal evaluation, and when he's in his charge attack equitable judgment. So that charging phase, as well as when you're actually using the beam, you're going to have a higher interruption resistance. And I have this, I've had it before and after the C1. At first, I didn't think that it was really necessary for the interruption resistance. I kind of thought at least it wasn't going to be that bad. But honestly, it has helped me so much because I've gotten whacked by so many things in the C0 point of time when I tried to do the Abyss before to kind of see what it would look like. I've gotten smacked out of it so many times. The C1 does really, really help, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's almost necessary. But I would say the C1, if you're going for a Constellation, it's probably just best to just stick with the C1 and go for that specifically. Now, looking at Kazuha, his C2 is probably his best early constellation, and I would have to say that without a doubt, because I have his C1, and his C1 does help, but the thing is, is what his C1 does is if you use your skill, and then you use your burst, you'll get your skill back. So after using your burst, your skill cooldown will be automatically reset. So you can do skill burst skill, and it kind of makes life a little bit easier, but it's not necessarily anything crazy good. It might just help getting your particles a little bit back after using your burst, as well as helping a little bit more in terms of grouping factors. Kazuha in his C2 though gets 200 elemental mastery when he's in the duration of his burst, so he doesn't even have to be inside of his burst because obviously he'll be off field most of the time, but he'll get 200 elemental mastery for whenever he has his burst going on, whenever that field is going to be created and however long it's going to take. Now the other party members will get 200 elemental mastery when they are inside the field that he creates with his burst. So they won't get the 200 elemental mastery if they are literally standing one meter outside of that burst. They have to be standing within it to get the 200 elemental mastery. Finally, looking at the last question, this is, do you need the weapons? Are they going to be worth it? And I'll just be blunt straight to the point. In terms of weapons, Tome of the Eternal Flow is great, but really only good for Nervalet. And like Vixen was stated earlier in the video in that section, it could possibly be good for Risley as well, but it would only be a good idea to go after this weapon for Nervalet. And with Kazwa, Freedom Sworn is a good weapon, but it is far from necessary for anyone. Most of the characters that could use this weapon could use a plethora of the four star options that will be easier to get. We've got things like Iron Sting. If you're there for the event, there's the Umbrella weapon. Um, there, there are other EM swords out there, I know for sure. And it would just be best to skip this weapon for that reason alone. But since it can be used on many different characters just for the EM, like we talked about Kuki on Hyper Bloom and there's some other options as well, it's not a terrible drop. But once again, I think at the end of the day, pulling the weapon for the designated character is really the only reason you should be going for it if you're going for a weapon a five-star weapon for a different character especially a five-star character that has a signature unless that's like a Zhongli thing where his signature is, isn't actually his best weapon I just say go for you know just wait for the other weapons on the other five-star characters it's just gonna be well worth your time unless you do just want that well we hope that this video could help you decide on whether these characters or weapons coming up on this next banner are for you. As always, if you have any suggestions that may help other players or even us, if we forgot something, go ahead and let us know down in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our Discord as well. Thank you again for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one.